Road Rash 2. I think that the image on screen and music explain this game well enough. Pure awesome. It's not just about how well you can ride your bike, it's about how well you can ride your bike while also smashing other players with a chain. This is like Hang On meets The Road Warrior. Most of these combat racing style games either excel at combat or at racing. They usually don't do both very well. Typically it's the racing that suffers. But not in this game. The driving or the motorcycle racing is excellent. I didn't notice it when I was playing, but after I hit that guy, I'm pretty sure he was knocked off balance and then smashed by a car. You can see it in the rear view mirror. This game is a thing of beauty. Road Rash 2, the sequel to Road Rash 1. It's been many years since I've played the first one. The second one has been in my collection for a while, and this is one of those games that you can play for a long time and build up your character because you can save your games with passwords, which also means you can find all the passwords online. I started at the beginning again recently and forgot how hard this game is. It's like Super Monaco GP in a way. You start with a very slow bike in the beginning, earn money as you win races, and then buy faster, more powerful bikes. So you don't build your character per se, but the bike that you're driving does make a big difference. As you're riding, other players will try to run you off the road. You can punch them, you can kick them. And I'm not entirely sure how I do it because I don't have the instruction manual, but you can swipe their weapons and then hit them with chains and clubs. You can also try to run them into oncoming traffic, and it's pretty much the way driving should be. Or the way that driving is in New Jersey rush hour. The music is not some of the best on the Genesis, but the driving is extremely challenging because if you get knocked off your bike, you lose any hope of actually placing in the race. It's the kind of game where you have to both drive well and defend your position. What we're looking at here is the beginning of the game, the first series of races which I'll complete and then move on to the second. The length of the race increases as you play through the game, meaning that it's more challenging to actually take the lead and hold it because if you get knocked off at the last at the last half of a mile well that's that's too bad that's a bit frustrating you can also get busted by the police if they happen to be around and they don't just haul you off to jail they throw you in the trunk of the squad car and probably dig a hole and bury you somewhere in the desert the moral of the story is don't fall off your bike Let's pick up a new bike here and continue racing. Don't stop to admire the leaves. We're here to win. Some of these older 16-bit driving games can be a bit cumbersome and suffer from some delay. Road Rash 2 does not have a problem with that. It's a bit jerky compared to the modern racing games and not quite as smooth as OutRun and Super Hang On on the Genesis, but very comparable to Super Monaco GP. But you can't club people while you're driving in Super Monaco GP, which really makes this a better game. When passing them isn't enough, kicking them off their bike will make them get the message. You're a better rider and a better person. 
If you finish in the top three, you qualify for the race after you qualify in all the races. On one level, you move on to the next level, and even if you don't win, you still earn some money. Because earlier in the game when you're just getting started, you're going to lose a lot of races, you'll be saving a couple bucks here and there. Don't get arrested because you lose money that way, and eventually you'll earn enough money to buy a super bike to help you really kick ass. I tried to punch out that patronizing deer, but uh, you can't punch things out when you're running. Not even animals. The game goes on for a while, five or six different series at least. And I'll work through that on my own time, but let's enter a cheat code so that you can see how this works. And unlock the Wild Thing 2000. The faster the bike, the more difficult that it is to control. The Wild Thing 2000 is no joke. Many of the bikes have nitrous and you double tap the B button to activate it, giving you a short burst of speed, which usually lands you in a tree or in front of a car. Did you notice that my guy got run over by a truck in that cutscene? Road Rash 2 has a terrific sense of humor, as you can probably tell. And this is one of the best games on the Genesis, no question. This, this will appeal to you if you like action games, driving games, old school games, or new games. It would be nice to see a remake of this for the newest game consoles. Keep the gameplay exactly the same and use the exact same cutscenes and dialogue, but but uh, just use the Need for Speed Shift or Gran Turismo 5 engine to run the game and then release it for the Sega Genesis in cartridge form. Maybe they could release a new version for uh, the Sega CD or Sega Saturn. Actually, I think there is a version of Road Rash on the Sega CD. I don't have that. I'll have to hunt that one down. And that's the game, Road Rash 2, a must play. And when I record game footage for classic game room reviews, I always like to keep an eye out for funny things that happen, like driving into a tree or when characters say stupid things, stuff like that. And I like good dramatic endings, like when you jump off a building or something. So while recording the footage for this game, I'm fairly confident that I got one of the best video game sequences to end a review on. Ever. Showing that you don't really need to be on your bike to actually win a race. That's how the pros do it in Road Rash 2. Who needs a bike? <laughs> 